You want to know why people don't want you to teach them a Bible study? It's because most of us treat God like 911. We follow the parts of Scripture that we feel comfortable with. We don't follow others. And you know what that ends up producing in society? We don't look any happier than they are. We don't look any more blessed than they are. Because in, in, in a practical way, in our day-to-day lives I'm talking about, not just on Sunday, that's different, because most of you are here every week, but day-to-day, how involved in your life is God when you're not in church? But my job this week is really to share with us that God wants exclusive worship and loyalty. That's what he wants. And that this will lead others back to him. They will lead people into the kingdom of God. So that's the main point. 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning with verse 36. Don't want to put them on the spot, but Michelle and Brandon are here and they got baptized in Jesus' name this last week. So they are here. Yep. I guess I did mean to put you on the spot. I do mean to put them on the spot. They're here now. They got baptized in Jesus' name. It's exciting times. 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning with verse 36. I'll give you the background here. I don't like making people stand for 45 verses, so we're just going to read the key ones, and I'll kind of fill in the blanks for people who aren't familiar with this passage of Scripture or this section in the Bible. It says, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah The prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and even the dust. It got everything and licked up the water that was in the trench. Now, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God, the Lord. He is God. You can be seated today. I do my best to speak to you guys today on attracting is for the brave. Attracting is for the brave. For those of you who aren't familiar with this passage of Scripture, you should be pretty familiar with it, right? Because our devotions last week set us up for the text today. Where the children of Israel, they were split into two nations. We talk about this a lot. They had a civil war The northern nation was Israel. The southern nation was Judah. And this involves the northern nation of Israel. And their king at the time, his name was Ahab, a wicked king. His wife Jezebel, even more wicked. And Ahab kind of let his wife kind of rule the roost in a lot of ways. She kind of controlled things behind the scenes. And so while Ahab was king, they had set up all these, these false gods and false worship. They were worshiping a god named Baal. Some people say Baal. But this guy was, this god was a god of, of storms. It was a god of the wind and storms and rain. And these things were important, right? Storms represent power. Rain is what you needed back then to grow crops, right? We know they didn't have shaws and Hannaford's and Price Chopper. If you needed something, somebody near you had to grow it in their field. And so Baal or Baal, very important, right, Todd? Because he brought the water that made life possible. So they worship not Yahweh, not Jehovah, the God that we worship. Israel had turned from him, followed their king and their queen. Well, Elijah's the prophet of the one true God. He faces culture and society and says, You are morally bankrupt. We have a sinful culture, so there's going to be no rain for three and a half years. He basically challenged their God, didn't he? So Baal is the one who gives you rain? My God says no rain for three and a half. It was a direct challenge to their God, to their system. If you're living in a system that's right, 
then let's see what your God can do. So then he runs off because God's like, you better get out. Jezebel doesn't like you. Jezebel, the queen, had a reputation for killing the people of God. So he runs off, again, from our devotions this week, right? What happened? He was fed by ravens. Again, what a great devotion. Ravens are scavengers. They don't share. Wasn't that in the devotions this week? So how miraculous was it that scavengers who don't share were being used to feed the man of God? Yeah. And he sits by this river, and like it has to happen for us, in order to get us out of our hiding place, eventually God, the birds aren't coming anymore. And because there's no rain, eventually the river dries up. So now you can't stay. And God says, you've got to go back. On his way back, he meets a widow, right? From last week. And miraculously, God has this, this meal and this oil continue to last over and over. And he's fed and she's fed all in the midst of the. Then he goes into Israel and he meets the king's right-hand man who's also an undercover prophet of God. And he meets him and he's like, Elijah. He's like, yeah. Yeah. I'm coming back. I want to see the king. And this kind of undercover prophet of God, he's like, why are you telling me this? Because he's like, you just disappear and show up. If I go tell Ahab that you're coming and you don't come, yeah. It was kind of like, thanks, but no thanks. You just put me in this horror. And Elijah's like, don't worry, I'm coming. So he comes and Ahab's kind of doing his thing. He's the king. He's the big shot. And Elijah shows up and he's like, oh, here comes the guy that's messed up our world. And Elijah's like, I haven't messed up the world. You've messed up the world. And then they, decide, they devise this thing. Elijah's like, how about we see who's right? We're going to get your prophets, 450 prophets of Baal, and we'll get me. And we'll have two altars, and, and we'll put a sacrifice on each altar. And whichever God answers by fire, he will be God. Amen. And so the prophets of Baal, they dance. They jumped up and down. They cut themselves, and the only thing that happened during that time is Elijah mocked them. He's like, maybe your God's sleeping. Maybe he's gone on a vacation, you know? I don't know if he was sinning in that moment or not. I I get it. I would have wanted to do the same thing, you know? But that's that's all that happened with all their jumping and cutting. And then Elijah, he has them, he takes 12 stones, right, representing the 12 tribes of Israel, representing unity. He rebuilds the altar. They put the sacrifice on the altar. They dig a trench around the altar. They dump water all over everything. It fills up the trenches. And then our text, he prayed and God answered by fire. And it was at that moment that all of the people turned back to God. Could you have that other slide up there, Quentin? Did both of them get up there? Why is this lesson even important to us? I touched on it a little bit last week, but I want you to know what it means to be successful individually, but as a church in the kingdom of God. I touched on part of this last week if you were there, but the first thing that's essential, and this all ties together of why we even need to pay attention to this, why is this important? This lesson is important for us right now. I'm going to show you why. The first thing is, in my own walk, someone had to let me know I needed God. I had to be attracted to God. I had to understand this is something I need and I want it to be a part of my life. It's the necessary first step. People see the power of God's love and purpose through us. We are usually the thing that attracts people into the kingdom of God. If they're going to come, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. You are a living epistle read by everybody. So God usually attracts people into the kingdom through his, through his people, through his church. So churches should be attracting people into the kingdom of God. When they get there, they must be converted, right? The people said in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost had fallen, what do we need to do to be saved? And Peter said, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for, for the remission of your sins, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, right? Throughout the entire book of Acts, we recognize that the sign of the, someone receiving the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. You must be attracted to God, you must be converted, and then you have to be discipled. How do I know that? Because Jesus said, go into all the world and not make converted, make disciples. 
And this is important for people sitting in this place today. Because in, in our church, and probably in every church, the biggest transition is from concerted, converted to the disciple. That's the biggest struggle. Because the main difference is, I, when, I, when I get to being converted, that's about me. I am dead in my trespasses and sins. I need God. To become a disciple is to say, now my life is about serving the Lord. I do what I do because I love him. I do what I do because I want to serve him. And you know what he does? He turns your life away from self-service to the service of. That's why we struggle so much between step two and step three. Because step three is not about me. It's about him. And you know what he, and we can prove this in scripture. The thing you need to do to be saved, everybody will say you need to be repent of your sins, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But Jesus said, if there's hungry around you and you don't feed them, if there are naked around you and you don't clothe them, put it in, con- he's talking about heaven or hell right there. He said, there's going to be people who are going to call me Lord. But when it comes to that point, I'm going to say, you didn't minister to other people, so depart from me. I never knew you. So if you're stuck between the converted stage and the discipleship phase, you're not, your soul is not secure. Because Jesus said, there's going to be some that are going to call me Lord. They won't make it because they never served other people. So this isn't just important for the church. This is important for my salvation and for yours. If you're only in this for you and you only do things that benefit you, you're not going to make it. You can't say that, Pastor. I didn't. Jesus did. In two different gospels, by the way. So I can prove it from scripture. If someone told you, all you need to do is repent, be baptized, and be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost to go to heaven, that's essential, but there's actually another step. We must become discipled so that we can get to this last phase here, which is where discipled people become disciple makers. So that we can achieve God's version of success, which is to become a glorious church Without spotter, that's his goal for you and I. That one day we stand before that throne and we're a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the, we have been converted and we'll disciple makers. That's his vision of success for me, for you, for us together. Here's the problem though. We have a lot of, we have more discipled people right now in this church than we probably have ever had. That doesn't mean you just know what to do. We actually have people who are doing these things, Right? Brother Ruben, you took Francois out for breakfast, and now you have a Bible study next week. That's being involved in the process, yeah. right? Brett, Brett taught a child in Andrea, yeah. and Andrea, yeah. taught Damien a, bi- a home Bible study, right? They drove out to what? Rygate, Groton area, to teach a child a Bible study. That is becoming a disciple maker that's just this week these things are starting to happen but once you become discipled and you want to be a disciple maker this is why this lesson's important we have to know how to attract people how can i i can't get them to listen to me have you ever been there before like i want to use the tools i've been given but i don't know how to use the tools that i've been given how do i do that we can't skip a step in this story we got to go back to the fact that the first thing Elijah did when he, was, when he had to stand for Jesus was God took him alone with the Lord for a while. Now, this is the part most of us don't mind in theory until we figure out what it actually means in practice. You want to know why people don't want you to teach them a Bible study? It's because most of us treat God like 911. We follow the parts of scripture that we feel comfortable with. We don't follow others. And you know what that ends up producing in society? We don't look any happier than they are. We don't look any more blessed than they are. Because in in, in a practical way, in our day-to-day lives I'm talking about, not just on Sunday, that's different, because most of you are here every week, but day-to-day, how involved in your life is God when you're not in church? For most of us, if you walked into our house 
maybe we don't have the vodka in the, in, in, the, in the drawer, or maybe we don't have the beer in the refrigerator, maybe we're, F-bombs are not being dropped in the background when we're playing music, but for most of us, if they walked into our lives and they followed us around, we don't do a whole lot different than what our neighbors do. The only difference is when a crisis happens, that's when we drop to our knees, that's when we reach out to our church family, they might reach out to alcohol, or they might reach out to a hobby, but in a day-to-day life, I wonder when was the last time your neighbor looked at you and said, I want to be just like you. And the reason it doesn't happen more often is we're not on fire for God between services. Why do I keep harping on prayer and devotion? Prayer and devotion. Prayer and devotion. Because it's when you get alone with God and he starts feeding you with ravens and he starts feeding you in the river while you're alone with God and he sends a miracle into your life like a widow and all of a sudden you're sustained when everything is falling apart. around. Those are the things that give you strength that when you face Ahab, you've got the goods. Too many of us, we're not, we're not doing well when nobody's around. We're not spending time alone with God. And because of that, our neighbors, we look just as depressed and sad as they do. Like, honestly, like, do you think about it? When we come into church, a lot of us are just like, oh, life's so hard. This is so bad. And I'm thinking if we are fired up for Jesus, like, life is still hard. Have you ever had a tragedy happen in your life? And you just ram right through it like there's nothing that can touch you. I have. I've also had crisis in my life, and it seems like every time the wind blows, I'm falling over. The difference between those scenarios isn't the difficulty of my life. It's where I'm at with Jesus. When I'm spending that quality time alone with the Lord, this world can't touch me. They can't dominate me. They can't take me down. And every time something bad happens, it turns into another miracle. It turns into another testimony. The difference between success and failure isn't the difficulty of my life. It's am I taking that time alone with God? And is he really feeding me? How's your personal relationship with Jesus? Come on, like that's what needs to happen. I want to ask, why am I, why are people not wanting a Bible study for me? Look in the mirror. This is easy. I am preaching to the choir. And some of you look so sad today. I'm thinking I'd never want to follow you. If you're sad, why does nobody want to hear about my testimony? Because <laughs> I'm thinking if I do what you do and I'm going to end up like you, I don't want to follow you. Before you leave your house, you need to let the Lord turn your frown upside down, right? If the miraculous power of God is so wonderful, I, it needs to explode out of me. Like the child one day said, Jesus is inside of us. And I was like, yeah, Jesus is inside of us. Jesus is so big. Yeah, he's so big. Then how come he doesn't come out of our eyes? And how come he doesn't come out of our ears? And how come he doesn't come out of our nose? This is a little kid trying to understand Jesus. But I think the kid was on to something. If I'm filled with the power of God, when I walk by people, they ought to feel it. And they ought to see it. Somebody needs to start saying to you, like they said to Sister Griggs in Hannaford, this lady is always so happy. It's like there's this glow coming from her you know what that is that's a byproduct of when nobody's around I am with Jesus and he's filling me up and when that happens it attracts I Jesus said if I am lifted up I will draw all human mankind unto myself This is important because we can't disciple people if we can't attract people. And the reason we're not attracting people is God is our 911, not our friend that sticks closer than somebody invite them into their life beyond Sundays. Somebody say you can be my friend that walks through life with me, not just the person who bails me out of trouble. That will dry. He got alone with Jesus. 
I was talking with somebody before church today, and I was describing my personal devotion. And I was saying, you know, there's some things that if you haven't experienced in your personal devotion, you need to. Probably 85% of my personal prayer sounds an awful lot like this as I talk to Jesus. But probably 10% of it, I just get lost in the spirit and just start speaking in, the, in, in other tongues because the Bible says that it, it, it utters words that, that, that I can't utter and that the spirit can make intercession for us. That is how you unlock the supernatural power of God in your life. He, he will heal you of things that you didn't know you were struggling with because this is a little bit deep. You might have to watch it on the video, but the spirit knows what I need when I don't know. But God doesn't do things for me unless I give him permission. So if I let the spirit speak through me, the spirit will use my mouth to give God permission to do things that I don't know that I need. Somebody watch that on the video three or four times to make sure you get that. Because when you get alone with Jesus and it gets real, you start under unlocking supernatural things in your life. When was the last time you spoke in tongues when it was just you and Jesus? Maybe your mental health issue would go away. Maybe your depression and anxiety would go away. Maybe all of a sudden you'd have faith to do things you've never had faith to do before. But it comes with taking that time alone with God seriously. Why do I harp on personal prayer and devotion? Absolutely. If somebody followed you right now, would you lead them to Jesus? I don't just mean to church. That's part of it. They don't want to come if what we're doing doesn't seem like it's working. God's never the problem in my life. I've always been the problem. So I got to look at myself and say, God, I want you more involved. I want you doing more for me. I need you. Because here's the thing at the end of the day that we learned from this. Because he was ready. When it came time to stand up for Jesus, we all know that there's always going to be opposition. The enemy doesn't give up his ground without a fight. He's going to lose to God every time. Satan knows that. He knows that his time is short. But, but what he knows he might be able to defeat is not God, but he knows that maybe, just maybe, he can defeat me and he can defeat you. And so our time alone with God will be tested. So he came out and everybody doesn't fall down. Ahab put his finger in his face and said, oh, here comes the one who's made our society a mess. He was like, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Your Bible, you teach this, and people can't do this, and people can't do that. Like God in the church is the problem. Hang on a second. God's not the problem here. There's no rain. That's your fault. No, no, no. The problem is sin. The, the no rain is the consequence of sin. And it's having that confidence in Jesus that's produced by that personal experience to be able to understand when we're put on the spot. Hang, whoa. Whoa. God was never the problem. Why does the, your church teach us this, and they're so strict about this, and they're so strict about that, and it's, what, why are they doing this, and why do they teach that, and why do they preach that? That's, a pro, that's not a problem. That's the solution. It is. That's right. We don't want your God. God had to show them. Your system doesn't work. And at some point in the church... We need to get alone with Jesus, not only to get the strength, not only to have the goods, but to have the heart that he wants, to share the truth, the truth, but the truth in love, to be able to look at them and say, why are you so bound to your way of thinking when it isn't working for you? We teach things at this church, people listen to them, go home and ignore them because they don't want to do them, but they're miserable. At some point in time, it's like some of these things in the Bible aren't easy, but they are the way to freedom. Our society, people are depressed at record levels. Anxiety's through the roof right now. People don't even know the difference between a man and a woman anymore. This is the direction our society is going. And God's trying to say, stand up and let them know this actually works. But they won't believe it or know it if you and I don't actually let him change us. But that's what Elijah did. Your God is the God of thunder and lightning? Prove it. I would ask society, you're trying to tell me that what I'm teaching and preaching is bogus and it's not good? I challenge you to show me that what you're living produces the same results of what I'm living. You don't think I have bad things happen to me? Why don't you ask me some questions? I'll tell you my life is just as difficult at yours as times. 
We all have different seasons and time. The reason I'm doing well today is because I decided he's smarter than me. Because I, I've tapped into a piece that passes understanding. That it's all these things I could start going through. So don't tell me my way doesn't work. I'm happy and you're not. But a lot of times we, we just curl up in a ball. Don't get angry and don't shout in people's faces. Let the love of God season your words. But we've got something that works. He said, prove it. The God of thunder and lightning, prove it. He literally picked something that put their system right in everybody's eyes and said, prove it. I want to know, what does society offer you? Riches? Fame? What happens when you get famous? Is that cool? It's a burden. Yeah. What happens when you get rich? Can I ask you, what is the difference between a, a Porsche and a... Pick something. Toyota Corolla? Oh, you could list all sorts of things. The size of the engine, the quality of the leather, the technology maybe in an infotainment system. But here's the thing. What is a car supposed to do? So if we start here with a new Toyota Corolla and you got a new Porsche and we need to go to Hannaford's, I want to ask society, what are you offering that's so great? Play it all the way to the end. Told Venus, yeah, if you do this, you can get rich. Well, what can you get? A bigger house. At the end of the day, your house is bigger than mine, but when it rains, I don't get wet and neither do you. You can't take it with. I can only sleep in one bedroom. My house has 45 bedrooms and 33 and a half bathrooms. You can only use one bathroom at the, at the time too, you know. <laughs> How many people live with you? Three people. So why do you need 45 bathrooms? There are three people in your house. Yeah. Well, it's because my house is so big. If I'm over here, I need a bathroom there. It's, it's, it, at the end of the day, what is society offering anybody? I telling somebody the other day, you know, when... When Michelle and Brandon go down in Jesus' name, anybody that has ever witnessed to them, anybody that's ever testified to them, anybody that's ever given them a ride, they made a decision and they should feel proud of that and God did something supernatural. But if you participated in that, you did something that's eternal. Your mansion can't give you that. Your fancy car it can't give you that. This is something that we need to understand, church. Why should anybody come to the mission? Because the mission is offering something that society can't offer. It is offering you a peace that passes understanding. There's personal stuff. But you can, have, you can help have somebody's name written down in the Lamb's book life. Nobody can promise that to any. I can promise you he's gone to prepare a place for you. He has and you get to live there forever. And that's something society can't. We've got something they don't have. But here's the thing. If we don't actually believe that, if that didn't stir you up when I just said it, there's the problem. Why should they get excited about heaven? If I'm not excited about heaven. Oh, he's calling us out today. How can we start attracting people into the kingdom? You've got to start believing what we say that we believe. Because this one person who dared to stand up God backed him up. He knew it because he had the word of God on it. God told him, time to get out and go face them, and I'm going to support you. If we know this thing through discipleship, you can step right out and say things. How do I know? Because God always backs up his word. So I can boldly say certain things and know he's always going to do it. If I stay in the book... He will do what he said he's going to do. But it wasn't until somebody stood up and called fire down from heaven. He showed my God 
does what your God promised he can do. Your God can't do what he promises. I just showed you my God gives the thing your God only promised he can do. And it was in that moment, we read it, that people bowed down and they started turning back to God. And then Elijah said, now the rain can come. Why? Because the people had turned back to God. That's when the consequence... Why? Because the consequence was no longer needed. Why is there no rain? Because you're morally dying and dead. I need to show you in the physical what's actually happening in the... But as soon as they turn back to God, now I can unlock the rain because I'm showing you the problem has been solved. Some of the things that people are struggling with will go away immediately. Some of the things our church are struggling with will go away immediately as soon as we get alone with God in a sincere way, get fired up, dare to face society, challenge their mindsets with the proof that Christ has given through us. And when they turn back to God, things will just start opening up everywhere. They just, they just will. So with 39 seconds left of my time up there, you guys don't know that. I got a timer for myself on the back wall now. If I see you guys turning around, I know I'm getting boring now. How much time does he have left up there? You know? How fired up are you for Jesus right now, you know? Amen. We're probably going to sing more praise songs around here in the near future. Because it's almost like God's trying to teach us until you get fired up about Jesus, nobody else is going to get fired up about Jesus. So when we're just singing about just testimony type stuff, it's like we're just getting warmed up. I'm going to get that smile on my face and in my spirit and it's going to be infectious every single place that I go. Attracting is not for the coward, it's for the brave. But I got to tell you, when I've fired up with Jesus, I feel a lot more brave. i just been alone with him. I got him. Amen. But now you've seen it. Where are you at? I think most of us are stuck between two and three. But for those of us who are here in this fourth box, I think some of us have been frustrated. Because I want to be a disciple maker, but it's not happening and it's like we're looking like everybody else is the issue. And God's trying to say, I just need you to get so in love with me, yeah. so full of my spirit that, that like that little kid was looking for, it's like coming out of my mouth and my ears and my nose. It's just everybody. When you get around me, it's just like coming out of me everywhere, you know? Here's the thing. The Holy Ghost is contagious. We just got to make sure that we are contagious. Stirring up the gift. So attracting is not for the coward, it's for the brave. But I think we've got more and more people that are wanting to do that. And if you feel like you're stuck, it's time to get alone with Jesus and take devotion and prayer seriously. How do I know it's seriously? Don't stop until you've stirred up the spirit. Get that power of God moving. Never go through the motions and just read it, shut it, and go to bed. Or read it, shut it, and walk out your door. It's time to get, dig in, and get at it. And then you won't be able to, it's like, pastor, I need some help with all these Bible studies. You know, people keep asking me for everything all the time. It's the way it works. It's the way it works. So we're getting ready to have our, another fellowship time, and then we're going to get back together, have some prayer. We do that on purpose. Get at it. We don't want to have church without Jesus. So we want to make sure that we invite him into this place, but also that, so that you're ready. But when Brother Russell leads us in praise and worship, I think you need to practice. We got peer pressure in here on purpose. We're trying to say, this is about Jesus. Get excited about him. But I worry for you. If you can't get excited about Jesus in here, how in the world are you going to get excited for Jesus? You know, I can see it. You're shutting your door, just, just jamming out to God when you're walking out your front door, you know? They might think you're crazy the first couple of times, but when they see you jacked up every day, eventually somebody's, I am not like that when I leave my house. But it's time to get at it in this place. 
It's time to get out in this place. Then Sister Greg's going to preach to us. I always have Sister Greg preach on Mother's Day because she's a mother. You know, she's a mother. But I look for, like mother. Absolutely. She got a good one for us tonight about the heart. It's going to be a good one. So why don't you take some time to fellowship then, you guys? Thanks for paying attention. Let's get it. Let's get it.